I remember P.T. Barnum offering a buy a rival's elephant. I remember P.T. Barnum offering to buy a rival's elephant. He sent a telegram stating his offer. His competitor took Barnum's telegram and ran it as an ad saying, Here's what Barnum thinks of our elephant. Instead of being upset, Barnum decided to join with those competitors that gave birth to the famous Barnum and Bailey Circus. Barnum took his experience and turned it into something good. The other day, Narissa, my love, released her first ebook on the www.freevideoediting.com. She had a small mistake on her site. When I went to promote her site, I used a mistake as a way of getting attention on her ebook. I could have said, correct your site. Instead, I sent her an email that said, there is a mistake on her site. And if you could spot it, I'll give you a gift. This caused people to get curious, a powerful motivator, and it drove traffic to her site. Sales jumped. When I, Barnum Joyner and Hill are doing is one thing. See, what I, Barnum, Joyner, and Napoleon Hill are doing is one thing. We're taking these so-called negative, negative experiences in life and turning them into something good. I call this T-I-I-S-G. This stands for Turn It Into Something Good. T-I-I-S-G. T-I-I-S-G. Turn It Into Something Good. The question redirects your mind. Instead of looking at the problem, you are now looking for solutions and a brilliant way to learn how to operate your own brain. You become a master, not a slave of your life. Andrew Carnegie, the tycoon who challenged Napoleon Hill to undertake his 20-year quest to uncover the secrets of success, confessed that the principal key to his own staggering success was the ability to operate his own mind. He told Hill that I'm no longer cursed by poverty because he took possession of his own mind, the mind that was yielded by every material thing I want and much more I needed. But he found the mind of a universal one, available to the humblest person as it is to be the greatest. It all began with the basic turning it into something good. Question, how can I turn it into something good? The answer will bring you new choices, happiness, and a way to lead wealth you and lead you to wealth in ways you've never dreamed of before. Just remember T I I S G. It's all good. I attended Bob Proctor's three day course, The Science of Getting Rich, in Denver during nineteen ninety nine. It was a mind expanding experience, and I urge you to take the course Life and Live if at all possible, or at least invest in the home study course. There are so many things that you'll get out of the material that where you'll where you are now, where you seem to be Poverty after you absorb the material will become wealthy. But one idea I got from Bob's course was, if you want to give it right now, is this quote. Everything that happens in your life is moving you in the direction of your goals. Everything that happens in your life is moving you in the direction of your goals. Now, think about this. That statement says that everything without fail, without exception, is moving you towards your dreams. So now that something is to happen, don't feel bad. Remember, what's happening you, what's happening to move you towards you, moving you forward, your job is to find the positive or the negative, at least to trust that there is a positive there. And even if you can't see it in the moment, this might be tough for you to accept, but the truth is, is that the enlightened way for living your life, I lost the statement and thank Bob Proctor for saying it. What it tells me is that I have to let go and just trust life itself for taking me into the things I desire. And just let go, trust, and gives me thanks for my life. I feel different. I radiate in a different vibrations to the world. And the better things I experience come true. Again, this whole secret is the learning. It's simply just letting go. But what do you do? But what do you do? Ever since my book, Spiritual Marketing, became a number one bestseller on Amazon, people have been writing me most of the time or just praising the book. Sometimes people have questions about my five-step process in this book for creating wealth from the inside out. But by far the most common question about my step five is the one called let go. But what do I do if I let go? But what do, but what do I do I, but what do I do if I let go? But what do I do if I let go is the question I get the most. If I let go, don't I just, do I just sit there? I Don't I just sit there? Well, what I didn't fully explain in the book was that you usually still have to do something to achieve your dream. Something that is a little answering as far as little answering the phone or making a call or buying a book or joining an association or swearing or answering an email. You have no idea what the action will be as long as you achieve your dreams. Now, you have to do something, however small or large steps. But a magic answer to the question of what action to do next is this. You want to take what I call inspired action. Inspired action. Inspired action is any action you take based on an inside nudge. In other words, an inspired action is when you suddenly get a desire to drive your store that you may have no idea what you might to need to go to the night to the store right now. In other words, inspired action is when you suddenly get a desire to drive to the store. You may have no idea why you need to go to the store right now, but something within you is urging you out the door. Follow that nudge. It may lead you to your goal, and at the store you might see the right person, find the right product, pick out the right magazine, or lead you to completing your dreams. For example, about 20 years ago, I was working in a major oil company when I left for lunch. I always went to the food court, the closest mall, always talked about being stuck in a rut. And one day I decided to do something different. As I left for lunch that day, I felt an impulse and turned left where I was always turned right. 
It may sound like nothing to you, but I meant the world to me. And it was leaving my planet and going into Mars. I was suddenly on an adventure. To my sheer amazement, only a few blocks was an Italian deli. An Italian deli. Now to picture this. I'm an Italian living in Texas. I hadn't gone to a good Italian food since leaving Ohio about 20 years earlier. To stumble across an Italian deli by accident during lunch hour was almost miraculous. I went inside and met the owner, and he was from Italy. He made me a sandwich, and it was good still to drool to this day. Think about it. I was so grateful that I took his menu back to my office, and I shut my door and created a whole new menu for him, and I wrote a new copy, designed it, and printed it, 500 copies, and then posted it on new menus all over the company building. The next day, when I went back to the deli, the owner met me with tears in his eyes. His business had booming all week long, all day long. His lunch hour was packed with customers. He didn't know how to thank me. I didn't need to be thanked. All I wanted was a sandwich. But the miracle didn't stop there. We became friends and with my wife and over time I needed to move and looked in for a place to move in. The owner of the deli sold us his house. He wanted to move because he built his house. He didn't want to move because he built the house himself. He neither wanted to give it to just anyone. And when we learned I needed a new home, he arranged for us to buy his house. We lived in the same place for 10 years and Mary and I still live in it to this day. And all because I took inspired action. Watch the signals. Once your state of intention and you work on the steps of the attractive factor process, you need to watch the signals and get into the act instantly on them. Act on the signals and when you see them. When I was working for a major oil company, I hated my job. I used to pray for a way out. This was 20 years ago. I felt lost. I felt trapped in my 9 to 5 person. I would drive 35 miles each way and from a job I hated so much, I could try. I drove it. I could cry as I drove. It was pretty sad but I stated my intention to break free and then looked for the signals. Every day I would pass the street sign named Quitman. I never thought much of it until I realized it was a signal for me. The sign was the freeway for people from where to exit, but for me it meant quit man. And I did, I did quit my job. I've been happier ever since. Today I'm known as an author, speaker, internet, celebrity, and much more. All because I took inspired action. Inspired action. Infinite mind. Here's another example. While writing this book, a dear friend of mine paid an unscheduled visit. To have realized this is highly unusual to live in a hill country outside of Austin, Texas, where it's easy not to get to and don't usually appreciate people dropping in unannounced. After all, we worked at home and would prefer not to be interrupted. I could be doing a radio show by phone, or Nerissa might be editing a video project, or our home is usually buzzed with activity. But a friend called in the right time, saying that he was in the area, so we told her to come on over, and the conversation was mostly about energy, re remote view reviewing. Remote viewing and mind over matter and other such as historic talk. During our conversation, our friend raved about a book called Infinite Minds. He told us that she read the reread the book, underlining passages, and thought it was pure genius. I immediately took the book as a signal to get into this book. I immediately took that as a signal for me to get this book and get the book. Why? Because the whole situation reeked of synchronicity. The fact is that a friend appeared while I was writing this seemed odd. The conversation directly applied to some of the principles of the attractor factor, and the book seemed to be like a must-have for my research. I immediately took the book inspired action and then I took our friend left and ran upstairs jumped online ordered the book from Amazon and overnighted the delivery N not only that but while as buying mode and I was in the buying mode I also ordered manifesting your heart's desires book I and manifesting your heart's desires book two they all turned out to be contained key information that helped me better communicate the attractor factor process to you all this is the form from which innocent events that others might have been dismissed now how do you do this so here's how you make an inspired action work for you step one Set an intention. An intention is a declaration about your dream goal that you want to be, do, or have. This is the request from which your subconscious or unconscious universe of itself. The clearer your intention, the better your results. One of my intentions was I have intended to make a best-selling audio tape program with Nightingale Conant. And another was I intended my spiritual marketing book to become a number one bestseller in Amazon. Yet another was I intended to find a new place to eat lunch. Step 2. Follow your hunches, watch your signals, listen to your intuition, and get your desires to make a plan of action and do it. Be it. Be it and do it. Now let's get your desires to go for a walk or walk television or watch television or surf the web and then do that. You never know where your inspired action will take you. But because you have to set an intention, step one, your intuition will find a shortcut to your dreams. Inspired action works because your ego can only see limited terrains while the universe can see it all. Your ego might write a business plan. Inspired action comes from bigger pictures from which you can't always see until you've taken the actions you're being inspired to take. Finally, the more you can quiet your mind, still your thoughts, and relax your body, the more you will hear the inner voice nudging you in the direction of your dreams. When it speaks, move. That's inspired action. 
Do it, and you'll find amazing new shortcuts directed to your fulfillment of your stated desires. It's an easy path, more fun, more relaxed, usually more profitable than planned action and constant struggle. Try it and see. A secret about money is let me tell you a secret about money is one day Pat O'Brien, wonderful Texas musician known in Europe, walked to the mastermind group we are now announced. One day, I'm going to write a book titled The Myth of Passive Income. He was joking. Everyone laughed. He was working hard on the site of www.instantchange.com and realized from the first-hand experience that there was little passive about passive income, that there was little passive about passive income. And I heard an opportunity that you ought to write that you ought to write that book right now. You ought to write that book right now. I said, everyone shut up. And they looked at me. It's a great idea, I explained. People think passive income is doing nothing all day and making money while you sleep. It isn't quite like that. So let's blow the whistle and tell people the truth. Let's blow the whistle and tell people the truth. I'll do it, he said. We met in the parking lot after the group meeting. Then he asked what we'd go ahead to write the letter asking people to making money online and how they would contribute to the article of our book. We would just know what the typical day would be like is this. And, my, and I bet they don't sit around doing nothing. Suddenly, I was the co-author of this project. Well, I see the opportunities and jumped on them, too. I agreed. I went home and went to the computer and I drafted a letter. It was simple. I asked successful people online what they could tell us about about their passive world. I sent a letter to Pat and he approved it almost instantly and then sent it out to every of owners, to every list owner I knew. This was all happened within maybe three hours. Within 24 hours we had wonderful articles of David Garfinkel, Tom Antian. Later the same day I heard from Jim Edwards, Yannick Silver, Johan Mock and other online giants all agreeing to send articles for our books. Now note what happened here. A spontaneous joke became a project. The project began to take form within three hours and within a day or so the book was being written and not by Pat or me. The process is now I created such money making digital products as such an online e-class as several best selling e-books, even a few online promotional campaigns I came up with the ideas within minutes and acted on them. The result? Success. So what does money like? Money likes speed. That's the secret that few know about money. Money comes from those who act fast. If you think, wonder, question, or doubt, plan, meet, and discuss in any other way, drag your feet, money goes to the next person in line. If you want to know how you've managed to write so many books, articles, and become an act so fast, the very section is for an example. 20 minutes ago, I had an idea to write something about money liking action. I thought it was to write the same day, and then I thought, why not now? Well, here you go. It's done. Now, you know the secret too. When you get inspired, nudge and take an action. Then take an action. Don't wait. Act, act right now. Act. What are you waiting for? Now, tend your garden. Many people say that they don't want to take any action, that they just want to let go and let go and let God. But that reminds me of a story of a man with a beautiful garden in his backyard. And one day the man walked by, saw it, and stopped to admire it. You have an amazing garden here, the stranger said. Thank you, said the owner. It's really God's garden, isn't it? Yes, it is, replied the owner. But you should have seen it when God had it all by himself. The point is, is God, universe, spirit, and whatever name feels right for you, is that God provides us with the basics that we have to do, something from which we've seen and been given, and just allow the things to grow in our backyards. We'll have to jungle. We'll have a jungle, if not a garden. Someone has to tend to the earth, okay? So take Jesus, for example, according to the Bruce Barn, author of 1925 bestseller, The Man Nobody Knows. Jesus was a businessman who hired 12 employees, inspired them, and sent them out to spread his message. That sounds marketing. That's inspired action. Or take Finneas Parker Quimby, the man credited by being the father of a new thought of modern spirituality. Martin Larson calls Quimby the advertising therapist. In his book, New Thought or a Modern Religious Approach, The Philosophies of Health, Happiness, and Prosperity, New York Philosophical Library, 1985. From 1847 to 1859, then the tireless searching Quimby went from town to town offering mental therapy throughout a power of faith. He distributed a brochure in 1855 which repudiated, repudiated the mesmeric hypnosis technique from which read in the part Dr. P.P. P. Quimby would respectfully announce that he would attend to those wishing to consult him in regards to their health and his practices unlike all of medical practices. It is necessary to say that it gives no medicine and it makes no outward applications but simply sits down by the patients, tells them their feelings or what they think is their disease and the patients admit they tells them their feelings etc. Then his explanation is the cure and he succeeds in correcting their error. He changes their fluids of the system, establishes their truth or health. The truth is the cure. As you can see, even the greater father of the metaphysical healing handed out flyers in order to get new business. He didn't sit or do nothing. The point was letting go. As he doesn't mean to do nothing, he means to take action based on your inspiration. If you feel you've been moved within, then make a call, run an ad, take a walk, build a community, then do so.